Hey guys, and welcome to number 55 of Jazz Piano Daily. Today, I'm going to show you in three steps, I'm going to explain upper structure triads to you. So let's dive right in. All right, so uh, basically, what is an upper structure triad? First of all, an upper structure triad is typically used on dominant seventh chords. Not to say that you can't use it on other uh, chord qualities, but start with it on the dominant seventh chord first because you have so many options on a dominant seventh chord. All right, so what it is is you have a bass chord, not bass as an upright bass, bass as in a foundational chord, and then you add other notes on top of that chord. So typically, one of the easiest ways of making an upper structure triad is to play your shells in the left hand. Remember, we've talked about shells before. That could either be the root and the third, the root third and the seventh, or the root and the seventh. I would tell you that adding the root three and seven is probably gonna be one of the best shells to start with because you're going to end up getting uh, the root, the third, and the seventh. But as you will see in a minute, sometimes you just wanna use the root and the third by itself. So take a look at this very first one. You see I have root three, seven, and in the right hand, what am I doing? I'm building a minor triad on the flat second, okay? So step one is you start with your shells in the left hand and you do a triad on top of those shelves, okay? So it means that it's gonna be higher than the notes that you're playing right here. You're not gonna play it down here, you're gonna play it up here, all right? So now, you, uh, I, I said, okay, so this is a triad built on the flat second, okay? So now we have to remember, everything kind of relates back to the key and the scale, right? So this is a C chord, so that means C chord, C scale. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So flat two, is D flat, okay? So it's a D flat triad, but I said minor triad, okay? So it's a D flat minor triad, but what am I doing? I'm not playing it in root position, I'm playing it in first inversion. Why? Typically, we don't play the upper structure triad in root position, or at least what I should say is we don't do that all the time, all right? We usually play those upper structure triads in inversions, okay? Not to say you can't do it in root position, Absolutely fine to do it in a root position, but you want to also be very adept at being able to move that, uh, move that around. Okay, so that's the first one. And this gives you what? It gives you a C7 with a flat 9 and a flat 13. Now what's interesting about this and the reason that we use our, our upper structure triads is because it makes it a lot easier for us to get to these really advanced sounding chords because all we're thinking is like, oh, okay, I got my shells in the left hand. Minor triad on the flat two, and there I, there I go, okay? I can get to it real quickly. All right, look at the next one. Now here's an example of a major triad built on the second, okay? Or built on nine, however you wanna think of it. This is nine, this is two, same thing, okay? So I'm building a major triad here. You'll notice this is in root position. Perfectly fine to do this. I could also move the inversions around. When I move the inversions around, especially if I'm going to be playing two uh, uh, handed chords like this and playing with a group, see how I can get these real beautiful chord voicings. Guide tones in the left hand, upper structured triad in the right hand. You know, gorgeous sound. Great sound, right? So something else for you to kind of think about. But for right now, we're gonna do the shells in the left hand just so we can get the chord, the chord sound. All right, so there's that one. Uh, take a look at the next one here. This one is a major triad built on the flat third. Okay, so it's an E flat major triad. And you see here, I'm playing just root three down here in the left hand. Why? Because I already have the seventh right here. Now I could do this. I could play it in the left hand and just play these top two notes. I could also do something like that as well. All of this is fine. Okay, all of that is fine. Uh, take a look at this one down here, the next one, the fourth one, okay? So this is a, uh, a, a major triad built on the flat five. So flat fifth, G flat. So it's a G flat major triad. I mean, listen to that sound, it's gorgeous. Flat nine, sharp 11, flat seven again. What about a minor triad built on the flatted fifth? I love this sound as well. That, 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 that's a real gorgeous sound. That's C7 with flat nine, sharp 11, and 13. What about a major triad built on the flat six? So an A flat major triad built on the, you know, uh, uh, over the chord shells, okay? So A flat major triad, that gives me sharp nine, flat 13. 
And then finally, take a look at the major triad built on the sixth. Okay, that gives me my 13th in there and flat nine. Now you might say, hey, wait a second, well, is that it? Well, yeah, you can mess around, there might be one or two other ones in there that, that I've uh, missed, but these are the main ones that you definitely want to know. Um, think about it, like, okay, so could I do like an E diminished triad on C7? Well, sure you could, but you see how you don't really get any benefit out of that, right? I mean, you're not getting anything. What about an F major triad? Well, is that gonna work? Well, no, it's not gonna work because the sus four there, right? That's going to conflict with your third. Okay. Now, it's not to say that you can't do these other types of chords because there are ways in which you can voice them and get some really interesting sounds. I would say, though, start with these seven first. All right, so now let's actually put some, uh, you know, uh, practical application here. Here we have just the first couple of measures of Days of Wine and Roses. Okay. Uh, and in this measure here, a lot of times we'll play A minor 7 to D7, just so for right now, we're just using this as an example, okay? All right, so take a look with the upper structure triads. So first of all, we start, sorry, okay? So this is just our, my basic major 7th chord for F major. Remember, go back in Jazz Piano Daily, I talk about those uh, rootless major 7th chords. Well, there you go, there's your rootless major 7th chord in your right hand. And I'm moving my pinky up a step because that's the melody note, so. And then I go down to E flat seven, it's a real simple voicing, root seven, third, thirteenth, but then the asterisks above the chords mean that that's an upper structure triad. So you got three upper structure triads here. See what I got right here, the E flat seven? It's an upper structure triad built on the ninth, or the second, right? So this gives me that sharp 11 in there, and 13. Right? Real cool sound going on, all right? All right, so now moving on. I love this sound. There's your D7, this is an altered sound, gives you sharp nine, flat 13. This is a major triad built on the flat six. Major triad built on the flat six, major triad built on the flat five. This then turns it into a D7 with a flat nine and a sharp 11. play that left hand again if you wanted to. Now, I have the play along track here, which you can download at Jazz Piano Daily. All right. All right, so you could hopefully hear that the upper structure triads really add a lot to this, all right? So let's talk through the three steps again. The first step is you want to just learn these upper structure triads, right? So start with the dominant chord, go through these uh, seven right here, okay? So do these, it tells you what it is, the minor triad built on the flat second, major triad built on the second, major triad on the flat third, major triad on the sixth, okay? So you got them all right there. This gives you the chord uh, symbol and, um, you know, and the voicing, okay? So that's step one, get those down. Step two, identify uh, dominant chords in a melody. All right, so find your dominant chords in a melody. So now once I see I got these dominant chords, now what I'm going to do is step three is I am going to voice down from the melody with a triad, okay? So if we take a look at what I did right here on the D7 altered. So I have root three seven for D7. That's my melody note, okay, for D7. So now I, I get to think, okay, so now, if I'm thinking that this note is part of a triad, it could be the root of the triad, the third of the triad, or the fifth of the triad, okay? Which uh, triad would it be? Well, if it's gonna be the root, it could be like a D major, D major, a D minor, but obviously why would we be playing a D major triad on a D7, right? It doesn't, it doesn't give us anything. Okay, so forget about it being the root. What about it being the third, okay? So if it's being the third, it could be a third of a B minor, Okay, so I can do something like that, and that's fine, but all it gives me is the 13th in there, right? I got my third and my 13th, right? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty vanilla, 
right? I mean, it sounds nice, but it, it's, it, it just doesn't add a lot of tension. Okay, so it's not going to be the third of B minor. Well, what about the third of B flat? Ah, yeah, that's nice, right? Now, what about it being the fifth? Well, it could be the fifth of what? A G chord. That's not going to work, though, because of the sus4. Even if it's G minor, uh, it's still not going to work, okay? So that, that, that's really not going to work. But now let's say that I have this, I know that it's a B flat major triad that's going to work on there, the flat six, that's going to work nicely. But then I could also say, okay, well, you know what? I don't want sharp nine in there. That's going to be too much. I could do that. Or go up to the third, okay? And just have my, my flat 13 in there. Or rather than sharp nine, I could say, let me put flat nine in there. Now, obviously, it's not going to sound great with the melody, but the point is, that I can then start to get flexible and move around with these chords, okay? So, to summarize again, the three steps. First of all, make sure that you go through and learn these seven upper structure triads, okay? Uh, um, just play around with the triad, play around with the shell. Step two, identify some standards that have some dominant seventh chords in them. And then step three, voice down from the melody note on the dominant seventh chord. Like I said, you could do an upper structure triad on a major chord, on a minor chord, but we're not going to uh, dive into those right now, right? Now, if there is a step four, it is definitely put your comments in the uh, uh, comment section below. I'm sure you're probably going to have some questions on this, so if I explained it too fast and you have some questions on it or you need some more help, write your comments below and then I will then uh, respond in a follow-up video. Uh, uh, just also remember as well, if you would like to get the sheet music and, and whatnot, go ahead and you can subscribe to the channel. And then also just go ahead back to jazzpianodaily.com for more lessons. All right, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in tomorrow's lesson.